Miss My Socks. It's the second week of December and I feel like illustrating something to get me in the mood. Hello, it's me, Mario. Hello, it's me, Jules, with another video on publishing and illustrating and drawing. If you have a children's story tumbling around inside your head, trying to get out and make itself into a book, you have come across the right channel because that's pretty much all I talk about. I named this illustration Getting the Tree. I think I've only ever had one Christmas tree. I don't really like real Christmas trees all that much. I've got an artificial one that's really good and you don't have to do any of the watering and you don't get any pine needles stuck in the bottom of your foot. However, this little foxy chap has been out in the woods and collected his Christmas tree, a real one. And he's on his way back home to decorate it with his family. Oh, I'm such a sucker for whimsy. Are you sitting comfortably? Then we shall begin. Here's our little foxy chum, just drawn in pencil, very light pencil at the moment, on this sheet of watercolour paper. So you can see it's very, very lightly done. I've got some trees up the top here and um, there's going to be a sort of pattern of hedge row down the bottom. We've got Fox pulling um, a Christmas tree on a sledge here and then the rest of it's going to be very snowy. Um, and then I'm going to have a very dark background up here. So the first thing I really need to do is I'm going to work from the top and I'm going to draw the trees in. So for that I've got um, a 0 0.3 Staedtler pigment liner, liner and I've left myself an edge, I've drawn a line all the way around the edge that eventually I will rub out and use masking tape to stick this down when I'm doing the actual painting. But so as I don't go over with my my black pen I'm going to, I've just drawn up to the edge. This tree is the one that's in the foreground, so it's probably going to have the most detail to it. But the I'm going to stop here because there's a, a sort of ridge of snow that comes up here and hides that bottom of the tree trunk. There's my first tree. And then the second tree slightly comes behind first one but we are going to see where it meets the ground and then some of these trees are beyond the horizon of the hill these two I just need to be a bit careful because there's that's the bottom half of that tree but um, up this tree here this one has got some branches that cross over where that one is so I'm just going to be really careful about making sure I know which one is which And again, it crosses over some of these ones in the background there. So just need to be 
a little bit careful about not getting them muddled. There we go. I'm going to swap over to my 0 0.2 for these trees behind it. And then some bushes are kind of in the middle here. Just using that same thickness of pen. And then there's one last one over here. This one's more of a sapling from maybe the, maybe it's only a couple of years old or something, so it's quite skinny. Okay, trees done. Well, what I will do is I'm just going to put a little bit of texture in some of these trees by way of just running some lines up and down and then this one's going to have lines around that sort of shows it the curve of the trunk And I think I'll do the same for this one as well. And then to show that these are different, these lines are going to be going up and down. Just helps to visually separate the different layers. Okay, on to Mr. Foxy. So I think I will carry on using this pen, the 0 0.2, because it's quite detailed. of rope around the tree and he's pulling it with his mouth so I need to get that angle right
something like that. And you can also see a bit of the sled. And then I think I'm going to swap over to the 0 0.3 just to do the Christmas tree leaves. And they're all kind of pointing away from the trunk, they're pointing up this way because um, when you buy Christmas trees normally they come in a kind of netting don't they so they don't get caught on everything so that's what's going on here he's got his already netted and then a little star on the top So what I do need is to just draw his little eye in, got a thinner pen for that, there you go, that's a 0 0.1, and then also a bit of rope on the other side. Okay, fox done. Some leaves, like about zero point two. Just for some leaves. Um, I think they'd just be kind of like beech leaves. But as it's winter, there's also a lot of berries. It's quite therapeutic doing this. It takes a little while. But sort of the concentrating. It's a bit like people enjoy doing colouring books because it's the same sort of thing, you know, you're just focusing on where your pen is heading. And it's a question of getting the balance right as well. So looking at the whole of that bottom, I'm wondering, you know, is there, are there any areas that look more bare than others? I'm actually thinking this tree probably needs something, maybe another branch. Just feels slightly out of balance to the other ones. But I'll put some more berries in as well, that might help. Yeah, that definitely helps. And this one needs some more berries as well. So there is the there is the finished pen drawing. What I'm going to do now is just make sure I leave that to dry really well, um, and for probably half an hour to an hour, something like that. So when I come back to rub out the lines, I'm not going to smudge anything. That's one thing I would definitely recommend: is you leave it long enough to dry if you're trying this. I forgot I was going to put some berries around these trees as well so I will do that and then let it dry um, and you'll see it when I've rubbed all the lines out. I'm going to take my time over doing this dark area behind the trees because I, um, well, I want to get it right for a start but also it just needs, it's got all these little areas that need individual attention. So I'm going to mix, I've mixed up a very dark blue for the sky. It's got a bit of um, Payne's Grey and a little bit of sepia. So a very dark brown. 
and I think I might just add a tiny little bit of vermilion as well just to bring up that red tone. I'm going to just lay down some water I'm going to do a few bits at a time. There we go, I've got three, three little patches on the go. And drop in some of that colour. The water is actually a really important part of the process of using the watercolour because it acts as the lubricant on the paper um, and the pigment uses that lubricant to move around the paper. And as this is drying, I will be keeping an eye on those areas just to make sure that um, there aren't any things that need attention, any little areas. Let me go around that tree. And I'm using the tubes of paint. I'm using uh, mostly Windsor and Newton, Cotman. Rather than my pans that I usually use because the I wanted to get a really saturated colour onto this particular painting. Okay, I'm just going to swap brushes for a moment to a smaller brush and just oh dear, start to bring that in a little bit. There. Better. This straight bit here is quite going to be quite easy to do. I've left myself a pencil line across the bottom here to show me where the horizon is. It's a really nice sort of inky blackness of winter, winter sky. When you use uh, black paint, whether it's um, watercolour or acrylic or even poster paint, it's a very it comes out very flat and um, 
really when you're looking at something black unless it is a really matte black you you can see you can detect or your eye can detect different colors within that black so to make it re more realistic when you're when you want to paint black it's a good idea to make your own black and using something like a dark green and red and maybe a tiny bit of dark blue can make a lovely black so it's well worth investigating that having a go In fact, this has got quite a lot of that Payne's growing, sorry, Payne's grey in it, so it's more of a sort of bluey black. But um, if you look up at the night sky, it's very rarely black, like a black cat is black. It's often got some light coming from either the stars or the moon or from a light source like a city. So you quite often get a lot of yellowy orange bleed into that blackness. And if you're really lucky, you might be somewhere near the all the lights. I live in a part of the UK where we don't get the uh, northern lights, unfortunately. But if you live in Scotland, you can get treated to such wonders. I would love to see it. Maybe one day. I'm just as I'm doing this, I'm keeping an eye on these other ones to make sure that there's no puddles of pigment that are sitting and not behaving themselves. And just this last little area to the right. Thankfully, I mixed up enough paint so that I didn't have to remix halfway through. Because that can sometimes be a bit of a headache. Especially if you can't get the, exactly the same colour again, which. Quite often, it's a tricky thing to do. Once you've mixed it once, it's difficult to replicate it exactly. Okay, I think I'm happy with that as it is. What I'm going to do is let that dry naturally and come back to it when that's finished. And onto the trees. So the plan is the further away ones are going to be darker and then get uh, lighter in blue as they come forward. So this one's going to be the lightest. And I've got some different shades and hues of blue that I've just squeezed out 
from my tubes so I shall be mixing this one's um, indigo so pretty similar to what I've used in the background so I don't want it to be too similar otherwise it will be different, difficult to differentiate it I might actually put just a little bit of purple in there as well ok let's try that I'm just leaving a few little areas of white just to give it some texture. This is working wet into dry, so wet paint into dry paper. Whereas previously, when I'd done the sky, that was wet into wet, wet, the paper was already wet. And then as that's drying, I'm just going to drop in a little bit more pigment. So now we're doing wet into wet. Again, just to give it that texture. And I think I'll just drop in a little bit of sort of violet magenta -y colour. Right, so coming forward, I'm just going to mix up another blue. So this one is, let me have a quick look, what do I mix it with? I mixed it with cobalt blue and some cerulean. And I think what I might do this time is I'll do these ones with a little bit of that indigo as well just to show that they are more in line with the furthest away trees so that we're getting slightly paler as I come forwards Then as I'm getting towards, because all this is going to be snowy, as I'm getting down towards the bottom, I'm just leaving more white. Make it look more like snow down the bottom there. Um, and then I think I'll do this one because it hasn't got any if I, if I try to do this one then I've got areas where it's touching wet and I don't want to do that so I'm going to come forward one more I'm going to add a little bit of that 
magenta violety purpley stuff in. And then just keeping a little eye on having try not to spill my water everywhere. I'm just keeping a little eye on this area up the top here. It's just ever so slightly got a bit of a tide mark going on that I don't want. That's good. Sorted that out. So now what I need to do is leave this to dry for a little while. Um, uh, what I could do actually is these two bushes. So I think we'll have a go at doing those. So thinner brush. Um, and I think what I might do is use the colour like this one, slightly darker, because I want, I'm want. i going to put some little berries around it, so that would be a good contrast if we do darker branches. And then just drop some of that pigment in whilst it's still wet. And then it does it, it sort of spreads out all on its own, makes a nice texture. And I'll do the same thing on the other little sapling, but I'm going to make it slightly more purpley. going to move on to this tree, the one in the foreground. So I've got the palest blue and actually it's quite a sort of cold blue. Which is good because it then gives some temperature to the picture. And I'm working quite quickly and loosely, which is kind of how I always work really, but I think with watercolour it's got a character of its own that really lends itself to that sort of loose, quick working. Sometimes if you pour over something and really give it a lot of focus and a lot of careful mark making with watercolour it just doesn't somehow just doesn't look as good just doesn't look as lively and 
vibrant. So for this one I want something in between this and this in terms of the colour so let's make let's see if I can manage that somehow so I'm using the two that magenta violet colour and that very pale blue let's see what that looks like probably needs a little bit more of the blue in it that's a bit better and also remember to use all parts of your brush so I'm using the tip quite a lot but sometimes you need to use the flat of the brush as well just to get quite a bit of that pigment on before things start to dry And then what I might do, just drop some water in and see what happens. So this is just water. What it tends to do is it, it sends the pigment that you've used out to the edges. So it gives you a bit more of a kind of tide line, which sometimes I don't want. But sometimes it's lovely, it makes a really nice texture and pattern. I might just pick up a little bit of that over here so that we've got a bit more contrast between the trees behind it. I'm just going to take a little bit of that off. doesn't have to be over the whole tree, just perhaps around those branches where they're very close. Okay, so I think what I will do next is a little sapling. Let's zoom in on that a little bit. A little sapling here needs some leaves and some foliage and stuff um, but because it's night time I think we're going to go for quite dark let's hope this isn't a mistake you never know and then I'm going to just do some dots around it where there might be some little remnants of leaves or berries Because I haven't, I've left a lot of white around that. I'm actually just going to retrospectively bring a little bit more colour into this area of the sky.
Now moving on to this one, what I'm going to do with this one is give it a, a sort of a wash of berry colour. I think I'm going to go quite vermilion for that. Um, because I'm probably, I think I'm going to use a coloured pencil to do any little details. But it just needs a bit of a, a bit of zhush to start with. Not too wet though. Just to go around that white space. So this is a bright yellow and vermilion mixed together. And the reason I've chosen those colours is because when I come to do the bottom area it's going to have a very similar colour, temperature and feel to it. So while that is drying what I need to do is concentrate on this area of snow and I'm not going to cover the whole thing I'm going to do little bits and pieces but I'm going to cover this area down the bottom here with a, a bit of blue. I'm probably going to go for the blue that I used there which I think is I think it's cobalt blue. I could be wrong. I'm just going to mix plenty up so I've got enough. And I'm going to also do wet in wet here. So this area here is still wet around the tree just there. So I'm going to, and that one, I'm going to void both of those. And actually whilst I'm looking at this, I see a little rogue bit of yellow bleeding into there. I'm just going to dry that off just a little bit so we have a tiny bit of tissue. I'm just going to dry that edge. That's fine. So, clean paintbrush, clean water. And I've drawn myself a couple of kind of slopes of where the, uh, the sort of hills and the ruckles are in the snow. So let's follow some of those. This is the first one. Suddenly it feels like the sun might be coming out. When I started this picture yesterday, it was a beautiful sunny day. And then I woke up this morning to lots of grey. But it looks like the sun might be coming out. So the lighting might look a bit different all of a sudden. A little bit of slightly purplier blue
holding my paintbrush right at the end, giving that sort of loose effect. That seems to be pretty dry now. I think what I'm going to do down here, whilst that is nice and dry, is I'm going to add more berries because I feel like it needs more. So that's going to be a bit time consuming. I'll uh, draw some more in and then I'll show you how I get on. Well that's a bit better. I just felt it was a bit naked. Needed a bit more oomph to it. So there we go. There's a few more berries there now and I'm going to move on to Mr Foxy. There he is in the middle. Whilst that pen is drying properly. So, I'm just going to get rid of this little bit of pencil mark there. I'm just going to get rid of by his ear. I'm going to use my smaller brush. I'm going to use a vermilion and I'm going to use um, a sort of gingery red I think they call it light red but it doesn't look that light to me okay got the paint the, the pigment mixed up I'm gonna just use some water to start with and I need to miss that bit around his sort of under his chin and across the bottom of his belly because those bits are going to be white and the end of his tail as well so I'm just gonna kind of miss those areas as best as possible He's got, they have little dark areas on, the, on their paws, on the ends of their paws, and on the tips of their ears as well. These are the European red foxes. I do live in quite a rural area, but I don't see foxes. I hear them. Because there's a there's a path very close to my house where they like to they like to use over night time, wandering up and down looking for things to eat. But I never see them, unfortunately. I'd love to see a bit more wildlife. Even when I go out super early in the morning with the dog. Okay, so now I need to go in with a bit of dark, so I'm going to pick up a bit of the sepia and then a little bit of burnt umber, I think. Just to kind of darken that just a wee bit. These paws. Little socks. I might come back to that actually when it's dried properly and do it with pencil maybe. And then a little bit of water. Good. And because none of this tree 
is touching him I think I'm going to be able to start the tree so I'm going to go with as soon as I've got that brownie colour mixed up I'm going to use that for the tree trunk And then I need to mix up some green, so I'm going to go with, it's kind of like a khaki green. And this is, I'm going to do this as a first layer, because I'm going to go back in with some pencil to do more detail. But this is just a loose, a loose green layer. got a little wet patch of blue just here so I'm going to be very careful not to spread that green onto the icy snow whilst he's drying. What I'll do is I'll grab my, my pencils what do I have that would be useful? I think I'm going to go for a red actually. What I've got here. I'm going to use these are my new favourite pencils. I think I've probably mentioned these quite a few times before. Derwent Ink Tense pencils, and this one is a hot red. Let's see what that looks like. So when you first apply it, it doesn't look that intense but when you add some water to it it somehow brings it alive and really makes that saturation level come up and I also have got a, a new yellow ink tense that I'd like to try out so we'll give that a go as well I'm so sorry about my creaky chair. There's the yellow. If you'll focus, there we go. Cadmium yellow. Yes, I think it's maybe time I invested in a chair that doesn't creak. Okay, now, if I get a paintbrush, clean paintbrush with clean water on it, see what happens. It really does just fire that pigment up. It's magic. What you can do as well if you want to is you can wet the end of the paintbrush so it's already primed. Let's try that with a yellow. That's great. Okay, so the idea is that we're going to have these three links of colour. The three links of colour are going to be that tree, the fox, and this bottom area down here. That's all going to be the same sort of temperature. So I wonder what might happen if I use this on Mr Foxy. I don't want to go too mad. 
just in case I don't like it. I'm going to give him a second layer. I don't want to overwork it. But I just feel like he needs to be a bit more. Let's stand out a little bit more. He needs to be the focus of this. Particular painting. I think this is that's dried. I have a green ink tense. Let's see what happens. So this is just this is some detail. I'm just giving some detail to the the pine needles. This colour is beach green. And then the star at the top, I think, probably do that sort of goldy colour. Or maybe silver. Silver might be better for the temperature of the picture because it's a cold night. Gold might just be a little bit too warm. Okay, let's see what happens when we add a bit of water. So again, this is just really loose. So some of some of the those strokes that I just put on are going to be more uh, saturated with water than others. And then perhaps back in the dry pencil just to picking up quite a bit of that water. Just going over very, very lightly because I don't want it to leave any sort of weird smudgy marks. I've done a few weird smudgy marks in the middle so I'm going to smooth those out, blend them in a little bit with the brush. Good. And then when that's dried, I might be so bold as to go back and do another layer. But whilst that is fixing itself, I'm going to move on to the bits down the bottom. That's all the leaves. So next, I'm going to pick up some of these the colours from the um, top again, and just start using those in amongst those berries. Sometimes you have to develop this thing where you look, instead of looking at really, things really detailed, you take a, a, a longer view, a wider view, 
to see where the balance of the picture is. can see that I have actually missed a few leaves which I will go back and put that green on okay back in with that green one there, one there, and there's another one there. Okay, so I think what I'll do now is I'll take up my two pencils that I've used previously. Where this bush is in the foreground, this little hedge, it's going to be, the details are going to be slightly more um, intricate and the colour saturation is going to be a bit deeper. Swap to the yellow. So now I'm just going to see, try and catch all of those little berries that I haven't yet put any colour in and just give them some of this yellow. And then I think what I'll do is I'll use my, I'm going to sharpen my pencil my red pencil it's super duper sharp and then just in some of these slightly paler ones I'm going to give that a bit of an edge so that it looks like there's a, a light and dark side to the berries I've got some some drag lines from the and footprints from the fox and the sledge. The last thing really that I need to do is I want to put some stars up in the sky. So I have got some white acrylic and a clean brush and I'm just going to use it straight from the tube. Just dab lots of little blobs of star There's a vague possibility that the bigger stars, I might need to go over those again with a little bit more acrylic. But 
the little teeny tiny ones I won't bother. Try and get them randomly splattered so it doesn't look like a neat pattern. Sometimes what you can do is use a, an old toothbrush and splatter it on and then it really is random. You've got to try and reproduce random which is of itself not random. So with the star down the bottom where the tree is, I've given it a one coat of sort of silveriness and left a little bit of white there just to show that it's there's a shine to it, a sheen. What I'm going to do is just add a little bit of darker tone to it to sort of enhance that shininess. So the only other thing I'm thinking I might do is where the where the um, hedgy bush bit down the bottom is. Just wondering if I've got a pencil that I could use just to in, just to sort of thicken up those twigs a bit. I think if I use a like a dark brown probably be the best thing. So I've got this is a Derwent watercolour dark brown. I'm just going to thicken up some of these lines. Doesn't have to be all of them. Just those main branches, I think, is probably. Gosh, this chair is cracking and creaking. So this would make a really nice Christmas present for somebody because although it's it's not um, overly Christmassy, so it's something that would look nice any you know any any time. It's a it's a winter picture, so it would look nice any time of the year. Displayed and um, framed. I think that would look pretty cool. I've got um, a blue-grey pencil here and I'm going to just do a few more little bits of trunk detail just to bring this up a little bit. The watercolour's actually made some really nice marks here. So 
I don't want to disrupt that too much. And then just where the, on the smaller branches, where the change in direction is, a little bit of detail there. And then maybe just, I might swap colours for that one. I might grab my new, never before used blue ink tents. See if I can sharpen that to a point. Lovely, nice colour. Now, have I got one that's purpley? Mm. Yes, I have. And then the last thing I'm going to do is just wet my thin brush again. Nice and clean and see how much intensity we can get out of this ink tense pencil. Pretty good. What I will do though is just just add a few extra areas. Just to bring that colour up a bit. If you'd like further artist tutorials, I have a variety of short courses that will help you. There are real-time sessions looking at painting, drawing and marker pens among others. And if you're keen on producing your own book, there is a more in-depth course on what you need to know about self-publishing a book with illustrations. That covers making key decisions, how to make layouts and dummy books, rhythm and pacing, as well as several tutorials on illustrating a book and a look at the tech. You can either hop over to my website or join me on Patreon for more information. Go on, give it a go! Are you going to paint something really special this Christmas? Something for somebody you love? I always think getting a present like that that's come from your soul and from something inside you, it's me so much more meaningful than um, just going out and buying something from a brand. I'd rather have a homemade pair of knitted socks or a painting done by somebody than a posh watch. Definitely. I never wear watches. Next week, I'm going to be asking you a big, big question. So make sure you tune in for that.
Until then, I will be hanging out in the nearest stable with a few goats and donkeys. Come on, it's Christmas! I will see you next week, Nanu Nanu.